Hello, so I'm just going to show you some basic vectory tips and hints uh, at making sort of basic things. I'm going to make a, a flashlight or a torch um, quickly to sort of show you some of the tools and how they work. I'll try and keep it as slow as possible. Um, uh, the first thing I want to talk to you about is just moving around the screen. The scroll wheel goes in and out. So if you pull that out and push that in, and if you hold it down, it will zoom in and out. The right click pans up and down, left and right, around and around, and uh, the left click rotates. So the first thing I'm going to do is talk about the tabs. You've got object up here, edit up here, and library here. This is your primitive shapes and how you transform shapes using these tools here and add lights and various other things. Edit allows you to edit shapes, make them how you want them, rather than using the primitives that come sort of pre-made here. And the library has a list of materials and assets you can add to your model. We'll use each of these today. And the first thing we're going to do is go to edit. Now we're going to go to cylinder here, click on that. And uh, you'll see a little sort of yellow square. You want to try and click that in the middle of the work plane there and pull it up to make a kind of torch-like uh, proportions. And the really important thing here is to add a few radial segments because it would make it a bit rounder. And the really important thing is height segments. And the reason why that is, is we're going to flare out the top of the torch. If we didn't have these height segments in there, the whole thing would just become a cone because there would be no bits dividing it up. So from the top of the shape to the bottom of the shape, it would become a cone. But by adding these segments in, we can focus on these individual parts to make them uh, and edit them how we want. So I'm going to press enter for that, and we're left with this shape here. This thing's called the widget. Now, the widget can move a shape about. It can rotate it. Um, it can scale it in different ways and transform it. And it does lots of things. And you can see I've really uh, manipulated the shape there. I don't want to do that. I'll just show you how it works. So this can be quite useful, but it also is one of the little things being on when you're editing other things, extruding what have you, you can kind of pop up and, and get in the way. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to flare out the top of the torch just to make it look um, uh, like it's got a lens bit on the end. And so what we've got is uh, three different types of selection. One is points, and you can grab things by points and manipulate those. So you can see here, it comes out like that. Um, you can grab lines, so you press shortcut two on your keypad. This can pull out individual lines and manipulate those, which we don't want to do. And then you've got three, which is faces. Now, if you want the, the buttons, they're up here, but I tend to use the shortcuts on the keyboard, one, two, and three. Three is faces. Now, I want to select all of the faces on top. Now, I could hold down Shift and individually select them, uh, but I find the widget, especially because I've got the measurements on mine, uh, it can get in the way. But if you just sort of double-click one of the pieces of pie there and press what I call the waff waffle, um, it's called, what's it called here? Um, select panel. Um, but I call it the waffle because it looks a bit like a waffle. I select that and I press enter twice. And then I can use the widget tool. And I use these little gray squares to make that flared bit like so. And obviously that flares out like that. And I've got my torch. Now, if uh, there's a help bar, I don't need that. So if I were to press tab, which snaps to view, like you can see here, up, down, left, right and I were looking at it from the side, I think maybe that is a bit of a harsh angle. So, so what I can do is select different bits and move them around. So if I were to press Shift again and select this panel and double click it, and then press this thing, which I call the roll of switch, which is the loop selection. Uh, if you press it once, twice, it will select this bit. And I can move this down and it will change the kind of, work. I could do it with the line even. It changes the kind of angle of the, uh, of the sort of conical shape there. Um, the next thing I want to do is make a sort of a bit to house the lens and the LED or the bulb or what have you. So I would do what I did before, press shift and double click a piece of pie, press the waffle, press enter twice to select it. Now if I were just to pull this up, I would just be pulling the top of the torch upwards and it wouldn't help me. So I need to use extrude and that's like to pull, push something uh, on, a, on a drawing. It lives over here in this menu, but the shortcut is E. So I press E and I pull that up. And then I can sort of decide, you know, type the measurement in or just drag it by eye. And so that looks kind of okay to me. The next thing I'm going to do is I want to keep this shape here, um, but I want it to be hollow. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press one for points and select the middle. I'm going to introduce you to another tool, which is called the bevel, and it lives over here, or shortcut B. And this little blue circle will appear, and if you grab that, you pull out like so. The bevel works anywhere. I'll, I'll, I'll use it again a bit later to show you. Uh, and then I've got points selected. So if I press three for faces, um, I can then extrude this down into the torch. I'm going to do a step before that. I'm going to press Control C to copy it first. And you'll see why in a second. So Control C. And then I'm going to press extrude, which is over here or shortcut E, and pull that down. Now that in this cavity, then that gives us space to put a lens or a LED bulb or whatever we want in there. Um, now that thing that I just did, the Control C, the copy, the reason why that's important is I want a, a glass lens in the top of this torch. If I go to Object, uh, and in this tab, I select New Object. This is like a layer you'd get in Photoshop. So it works in layers where the different objects live on top of each other. So think of this as like a layer in Photoshop. I pop that on there. And if I press Control V, which means paste, that selection that I made before I shrunk it down into the thing is still there in exactly the place I need it for a lens to be. If I were to press three again with the surface and extrude down again, I have made myself a little lens, which would be uh, made of glass or what have you. Um, so that's that there, I've done that. Uh, if I go back to objects, you can see they're both there. Now, if I'd used the same layer, I hadn't split these two objects into different layers, it would look like this now, where uh, I can't tell the difference between the two because they're on the same layer. When they're on a separate layer, I can change the color and you can see the difference between the two. Now, if you manage to get this done, this is a great basic sort of torch shape, but we can get it looking a bit better than this. So we're gonna go back into the edit mode on this particular shape here. And we're gonna add some bevels onto the thing. And there's a reason why I'm gonna add the bevels. So let's select this here. I'm gonna press bevel on this one. And that's gonna make a little button for me. And I'm gonna extrude it out like so. And that's gonna be the button that turns off my torch on and off. Um, now I kind of want it to be fairly crisp. To how, to how to keep it crisp would be like this. If I select the face, I kind of want it more square than that. So I can pull this down and it will make it more square. Uh, press enter. And then I'm gonna press uh, two to select the faces. And then I'm gonna select this bevel option again. And I'm gonna put a slight bevel on the edge of this and you'll see why. It's only slight, it's gonna stop I've got this uh, other tool that smooths it all out and makes it look all um, sort of ergonomic and uh, biomorphic. But if you don't bevel the edges, it smooths everything away. So um, I held down shift and double click that. I'm gonna pick the roller suites to select all of them. They should turn yellow. Press enter. Press bevel again over here. Um, pull it up so you've got a slight edge. And what it will do is when the smoothing will happen, it will smooth all of these edges off, but the ones that are beveled will stay nice and sharp. I also want to do that to the top. So I'm going to select by pressing shift all of those edges, press the, the roll of sweets, press enter, hold down shift, do the next one for that one, roll of sweets, enter. We're going to put a bevel on that again. Remember the bevel's over here, but I use the shortcut B. And I'm going to put a slight bevel on that. And the reason why I've done all of this is if I go to the object menu with this layer selected here, um, and I go down to, there's loads of options here, but if you go to this one here called Generate, and you go to Subdivide Surface, this is what I call the smoothing. So you press this and it will smooth everything out unless it's been beveled. So you click on that, and then over on this side, you've got all the options that can get quite confusing. But all you want to do is select the number three, which means nice and smooth. And you can see there, where uh, I've got the button, I've got the uh, edge is still quite crisp down here. Uh, the rest of it's nice and smooth. Um, if I'm not kind of happy with what I've done, I can always go back into the, the buffer layer and go into edit. And where things aren't quite right, I can sort of change them. So for example, if I wanted to um, have a little bit where a division, for example, down here, where it looks like you can unscrew the bottom. If I were to put a bevel in there, so, uh, press enter, again, I were to press three, which selects all the faces, and I were to press extrude and pull that in. You can see in real time, with the smooth and still active, it's making that little ridge.
Um, so, and then I think if that's a bit over pronounced, I can squish it down a bit like that to sort of really get that kind of crisp line. And I go back to the object and you can see, it looks like I've got a little division there now where I can unscrew the bottom to get the batteries in. So you can edit it once you, you've smoothed it. You'll note that the top here still has those harsh edges, so I'll need to put a smooth on as well. So I go to edit again. I can just select the top of this, press two, and it will automatically select the edge because it's a single face. I press bevel, that will pull in like so. Uh, go to object, bump along down to subdivide surface, select level three, which is my bay level for some reason, and that smoothed that all out like so. And then I can go to the library over here to select some materials. So I've got glass here. So let's select a nice glass for the top of that. Um, and uh, once with the sort of glass selected, you can also uh, change all the values there. Say if you wanted it to be a bit more see-through, you can change the opacity and all sorts of things. But how reflective it is, you can get quite into that. But I'm going to leave that for now. And for the body, uh, I could go down to another thing. I could wood, concrete, fabric. Um, you could search something, but I'm going to go with metal. That seems right to me. And I'll go for like a kind of brushed aluminium type thing. There we go. And I've got a torch design. I'm going to show you things like rendering and outputting these sort of designs later on. But for the moment, some basic tools to get get a, a sort of fairly basic shape into something that looks uh, a little bit more interesting. Uh, and then obviously you can use these principles to really sort of tweak the idea and really change it and, and make it your own. So I hope you found that useful. Um, and I'll see you next time.